My name is Slavka. I'm from Alabama, and this channel is about living, traveling, and learning. See you on the road. Well, we got our trailer kind of hooked up. Let's go walk around and see if, uh, if there's any damage to all of us here. I don't know what that is. Let's see. Oh gosh, they put those high security seals. Oh man, those are pain in the ass to take off. This, uh, um, not ordinary wire. <laughs> in fact, you see this twisted right here? That's from me trying to take the damn thing off last time. You can't cut it either. Um, bolt cutters won't work on it. Uh, I hope the receiver has like a, a grinding disc or something. It's really that bad, guys. That seal is some serious business. Well, what do you want? It's high value electronics. There's probably $200,000 worth of product in here. Speaking of which, I'm going to be uh, the high value load. We have to drive first 240 miles without stopping. At least that's the recommended distance. I think it has something to do with the fact if somebody were to follow you. They're gonna run out of gas at least, you know, 80% of the time. Our patients to follow the truck that far. Because that's about six hours, five hours. So, yeah, which is fine. It's gonna work out for me anyway. I'm not gonna stop those cocaine it. <laughs> Alright. We're almost ready to go. Everything's hooked up. That's gonna be a super nice and long trip. So, we're going to be... Let's do our trip set up. Yeah. Get all my uh, things situated here. Just bear with me. Doral, Florida. Doral is a suburb of Miami. It's on the western side of Miami. Down there by Everglades. If you guys have been in South Florida, you know what I'm talking about. Just want to see what the GPS... I know uh, I'm not going to follow uh, GPS route for sure. Because most of the time the GPS wants you to go well, it's going to want me to go through Montana on I-90, then said Billings split off, go down 90 through uh, Wyoming, then South Dakota, then hop on 29, get down there, then get on 70 towards St. Louis, around Kansas City, get down towards Memphis, uh, ten, um, Nashville, Tennessee, and so on and so on through Atlanta, Georgia, and, and in there. But the problem with that route, it takes you through all the big-ass cities with all the traffic. 
Like I have no interest going through uh, any of those cities, including Kansas City, St. Louis, Nashville, and especially Atlanta. Fuck that. Uh, so we're gonna go a little bit different way. Not the same distance, but uh, it's gonna involve some state roads and going down through uh, Ozarks in the southern Missouri. Uh, let's see, where are we going? Northwest. Yeah, I'm just putting this in uh, in the GPS just because uh, I'm gonna need to tell my uh, dispatch and a broker approximately when to set up the appointment. But I'm pretty sure this is uh, this is about 3,200 some miles gonna be door to door. So this is at least seven day trip for sure. Maybe six and a half, seven. I don't know. Last time I've done this was last fall and uh, it was full six and a half days. And you know, I, I don't always do full fucking uh, 700 miles a day. I sometimes just not feeling it. So I calculate my average trip uh, 550 miles per day. That way, some days I do 650, other days I do 500, you know, and, and it all averages out. All right, what's the house number? It's gonna take a minute to calculate. <laughs> that's a lot. Of, that's a lot of roads to calculate. Oh, let's see what it calculates. I'm calculating route. All the sensible truckers pick up loads that are like four, five hundred miles. I'm going three, two hundred miles or more. <laughs> yeah, of course, dirt road. Yeah, thirty-two hundred eighty-eight miles. Yeah, yeah. Like I told you guys. I mean, this is a, this is a standard GPS. See how he wants me to go. With Spokane, just follow 90, split, this is Billings right here, Billings, Montana, split down to South Dakota, uh, and through Rapid City, then Sioux Falls, 29, through Omaha, Nebraska, all the way to Kansas City, then 70, towards blah, 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 and basically, like, like this whole stretch is just all traffic -y shit, especially Atlanta, and with the spring break going on right now, everybody's going to Florida this way, you know, gonna be nightmare so I'm gonna go a little bit different way we're gonna uh, we're gonna go pretty much follow this up until Sioux Falls or well, up to Kansas City and then we're gonna cut through uh, state routes here through Springfield through Ozarks and then come down towards Memphis there's state roads here they're pretty nice highways I go there all the time then we're gonna cut down to Birmingham go down to Montgomery on 65 and then take this state road towards Lakeland Florida uh, there's a nice road there, and uh, we'll get on 10 briefly, and then catch 75. From 75, we'll go down all the way down to Fort Lauderdale, Cape Coral, Naples, and then cut through uh, from the backside of Miami, the Everglades Highway uh, on 41. So I'm going to avoid all this tourist shit right here. I mean, I'm going to catch some over here, but that's not as bad. And there, there are state routes in Florida. They're pretty good highways. You can just uh, avoid tourist shit. If you know how to go because uh i'm pretty much you know i'm from this area i know what i'm talking about as far as uh spring break and all the vacationers basically it's just a nightmare there's sometimes gridlock on i-95 and uh 75 because someone's people towing campers boats god knows what you know and there's just crazy traffic because of that like elderly and and crazy people driving all in the same pl time same place trying to occupy same space-time continuum basically and that just doesn't work out and then uh there's no reason for me to go through atlanta this is just this is like wasting three four hours of your lifetime nashville same way uh, yeah the, the gps is stupid see the problem is there's no i mean it's not a problem but i mean there, there are really no like diagonal highways most of the highway grid is usually north south or east west so you're kind of s stair stepping down but state roads, there's plenty of them that go like where you need to, and uh, often it's a more optimal route. Because GPS just looks at the speed limit and it calculates the average speed, doesn't take into account the cities and the traffic that's in them. And uh, a lot of times I can take a state road that's a speed limit maybe instead of 70, like around here, but 65, you can still go 70 there. There's no state police on there, rarely. And uh, yeah, I end up faster going through there than, than through all these cities and, and less 
less uh, bullshit anyways, less stress for me, so, and that's, that's the way I roll. Alrighty guys, so this is the beginning of our trip, as you can see, I'm all the way here, and in a week I need to end up all the way there, good times, I don't know, these, these kind of trips, you know, it's like a, an achievement when you complete them, so, alright guys, we're gonna probably have multiple episodes while I'm driving on this, I mean, I'm, you know, we're gonna get to, today, uh, you know, I'm gonna get to Montana, and uh, probably shut down there somewhere. All righty. Started getting in these snow squall lines 
and uh, about halfway to Bozeman, the visibility dropped down to just basically yards, and uh, snow, and like it was kind of like a mix of ice and uh, snow just started taking everything, including the road, and then the wind, uh, and I'm only 8,200 pounds, so, you know, when you can't see, you can't stop, and you, you can't really drive straight on the road, it's time to shut down, so... Yeah, unfortunately lost a bunch of times, but I'm safe and sound. The load is secure. You know, stopped at the truck stop and just waited it out. Today's a nice clear day. No problems at all. Sometimes, you know, you just got to do the right thing. Because uh, when visibility drops like that and it's icy, uh, you're just asking for, you know, asking for some kind of trouble. Because you, you can't even see more than 100 yards. And, and uh, iced up roads, if something somebody stopped on the road or there's an accident, it's going to plow into it and just going to be another statistic. So I, I refuse to be another statistic. I remove myself from the road at that point, you know. Um, so that's the deal, yo. We're a little bit behind now. We're going to have to try to make it up over the next few days. But uh, I don't have any said delivery appointment yet. That'll probably happen as I get closer and I'll have more concrete date. Um, so well, that's about it. So today we're going to go through, uh, right now, we're coming up on Bozeman, Montana. They're going to get Billings. And uh, unlike the previous trip where we were heading west, uh, we're going to go take 90 at this point. So after Billings, Montana, we're going to go towards Wyoming and then South Dakota, past Sturgis, uh, and, and so on, and uh, to Sioux City, Sioux Falls. And, and then we're going to take 29 all the way down to Kansas City. So today we're probably going to get to South Dakota, um, Box Elder, somewhere around there, and uh, that's the plan. Here we are on the other side of a 90-94 split. They'll meet again in Wisconsin. This time we're going to 90. Approach Wyoming starts to get extreme. Pretty much going to be running on the eastern side of the Bighorn Mountain Range, just continuation of uh, Rockies, all the way up until. Uh, well, we're going to stop at Sheridan, that's the first city there, take a break, but that's why it gets so windy around here. That's uh, the mountain range and all the air currents get squeezed. guys hear this listen
It's a straight line winds out here in South Dakota. I'm in the box elder loves. Holy shit, last uh, dozen miles or so. Oh, man. I'm in the right lane, and my trailer's literally riding an emergency lane. I have no weight, practically. 8,000 pounds, and uh, this kind of stuff just uh, makes my day go bad. Because I, I can't even go more than 40 miles per hour in these kind of winds. Which is kind of bad, because, you know, the speed limit here is uh, 75, people going 80. When you go this slow, uh, you're... In essence, a rolling roadblock, and you cause an accident like that because someone's not paying attention, you know, texting in their phone, and they look up and they see the back end of the semi that's creeping along because of the wind. So I don't want any of that problems. It's crazy. Hopefully it'll blow down. And usually the wind out here picks up in the afternoon, and it kind of calms down. So I think I'm going to sit, sit tight, and then tomorrow early morning, before sunrise get going again just to get through South Dakota as long as I'm out of here before uh, lunch tomorrow like all the way through down towards uh, Nebraska I should be okay there's no trees around here nothing it's just uh, straight up uh, prairie and uh, the winds are ridiculous in the afternoon it, it helps when you load it in a situation but in my case um, I'm just getting blown around like a kite. Well, today is the last day we're out in the west, heading east in South Dakota on I-90. Nice open road going 80 miles per hour. Enjoying the moonscape of desolates. But this prairies of South Dakota, look at this. Nothing around, not a tree, nothing. I'm going to be in the Midwest, probably near Kansas City, uh, Omaha, Nebraska, somewhere about there. Closer towards the second half of the day. Well, that means more traffic, slower speed limits. Yeah. Getting closer. a topic I want to discuss and I'm quite embarrassed by it it's something I encounter all the time in the you know in the process of uh, living on the road it's vocal poopers and hear me out before you turn this channel off and discuss so imagine this you're as a truck driver we, we're not home right so you have to go use public bathrooms at least once or twice a day and you get in and stall and maybe five or six of them, depending on the truck stop, and you know, you do your business. Hey, you, you got it all comfortable doing your business, and next thing you hear next to you, oh, yeah, oh, mm. and it keeps repeating like that, like a record, like, like, like just the variation, but oh, ah, mm, yeah, like every. 15 seconds or so at that point you sit there like what the fuck is going on like, what the fuck is that dude next like he's literally like maybe three feet from you you know just a thin uh thin uh, uh drywall like separator and then uh, you know you would think uh, okay it's one crazy guy but that happens all the fucking time different places different times like at least once a week or sometimes twice a week so it's got to be like a, a percentage of population that has some kind of anal vocalism or what I call I don't know what the fuck it is it's got to be mental or something like why do you like moan and groan and sound like a fucking dying mastodon or you know a cheap uh, uh, amateur gay porno because it's like you know after 15 minutes of yeah, like that I mean what the fuck are you doing shoving shit up your ass like a bottle or something I don't know like what is it does anyone know anyone encounter that like why did why did some guys in public have to have the need to uh, vocalize their you know shitting experience? Like is it a song of my people or something that I missed? Or anyways, that's a point uh, topic for discussion, and I was hoped uh, to bring this up. <laughs> have a good day, guys. Uh, write in the comments. 
What do you think it is? 